what is going on guys and welcome back to another video in this video we are going to be building a sample financial calculator modeled on something like this and so the idea is that a person is going to come in they're going to enter some of these values and they're going to get the monthly payment number that they need to pay to the bank every single month but this specific calculator is not going to be a regular calculator it's going to have a certain twist because we're not going to be hard coding the data we are going to be getting a data from an external store and so you definitely want to watch this tutorial because i'm going to be introducing some new concepts that you can utilize right away and this is all very very simple because we're not going to be using any workflows at all in this specific video and so take a look at this basic financial calculator it's very very simple you have your home price you can enter the home price here and you want to enter the down payment and typically in the us is 20 percent uh, at least down payment is the norm and if you enter this down payment you have to you're basically taking a loan for the rest of the amount and so let's say the uh the house value is three hundred you your down payment is sixty thousand. you're taking out a loan for two hundred and forty thousand dollars this is the length of the loan 30 years and the interest rate is 2.9 percent and so this is something very similar that we are going to be building today and so let me show you the calculator that i built out here and so here's the calculator it's very very simple there's no crazy graphics or anything like that let me show you how it works the first thing that you can do and this is a, a little bit different is that you have to enter your credit rating so there's various credit ratings and typically a credit rating ranges anywhere from you know less than 500 to around 400 something uh anywhere to 800 plus so anything above 800 is considered excellent anything in this range is considered fair or poor so it really depends and the lower your credit rating the higher the apr the higher the percentage that the bank is going to charge you and so in this instance if i pick anywhere from you know let's say my credit rating is 400 to 500 my apr jumps to eight percent and these are all sample numbers these are not real numbers these are all made up numbers if you want to get you know real numbers you have to, you have to go to the source and actually populate the real numbers but these are all made up numbers but they are kind of similar to the actual numbers because if i go to something like seven to eight hundred my apr is four percent it's probably going to be a little bit less than that in real life but these are all just for this purpose of this example and so if i go to 800 plus i go to, uh, you know my apr goes down to two percent and the next thing you can do is you can modify the down payment so we have the home price and let's say i want to place a uh, hundred thousand dollar down payment i can do that as well and i'm going to get the loan amount is going to be three hundred thousand and the monthly payment changes to a thousand one oh eight eighty six these are all made up numbers but i'm using a formula which i'm going to show you in a second that is able to analyze all of this and able to come up with the with the payment value correctly so let's say i'm putting in a three hundred thousand dollar down payment which means my loan amount is only a hundred thousand dollars and that two percent for 30 years we're assuming 30 years i don't have it entered here the monthly payment is going to be roughly three hundred and sixty nine dollars and sixty two cents so it's a really nice calculator it works with what we're working on here so if i change this it jumps to 665 even though the loan amount is the same it's because the apr jumped from four percent or was a two percent uh whatever to seven percent so the first thing i want to show you is that i am getting this data in an external spreadsheet okay so i have a sample spreadsheet here and we have a credit rating and we have an apr and so when it comes to the app here in bubble the credit rating these fields are getting populated from this spreadsheet okay they're not hard coded so i can go on later and i can remove fields i can add new fields i can do a lot of interesting things so this makes the method a lot more powerful because i can modify this this as i see fit i can modify it and bubble is going to reflect the data automatically and the next thing you want to pay attention to is this apr whenever we pick 
So if we go back to the app, whenever we pick a new value, it changes the APR here and everything is uh, reformatted. So once I pick, let's say 700, it goes from six to four and the monthly payments change as well. And there's no workflows here, nothing like that. And so this is the first thing is that we are using a spreadsheet. The next thing you wanna do is you wanna go to Shiri.io if you wanna use the same method and you wanna sign in with your Google account. Once you're gonna sign in with your Google account, it's gonna ask you to give them the spreadsheet and you wanna share it read only. So you wanna click on here, you wanna share it. And so when you share it, it means that anybody with a link can access it to read it. They won't be able to modify it, but I, but they can read the data. And so for the purpose of this tutorial, this is perfectly fine because we're not looking to have the app modify or remove or edit any data at all. Okay, so once you do that, you're gonna have your sheets listed here. I actually have only one sheet here and it's gonna give us this URL. And, and when you go to this URL, you're gonna have a list of your data in a nicely formatted JSON format. And JSON is essentially a format that's very easy for apps to parse, to understand, to, to read and, and make sense of it. It's very, very easy for them. And this is JSON format. And what this means is that we have this JSON object here. This is this initial object. And then we have a name of the initial and this sheet one is made up of arrays. So in this instant, we have an arrays, array of objects and each object is a row in this spreadsheet, which makes it very, very easy to make sense of this data and to do all these interesting things with this data. And so after that, you wanna go into your app and this is what my app looks like here and I'm gonna show you a lot of the ins and outs of this app real quick. But before I do that, you wanna go into, okay, you wanna add, add plugins and you wanna search for API and it's typically gonna be the first result right here is you have this API connector. I have it installed, that's why it's, I can uninstall it. Once you do that, you're gonna have this nice, uh, nice little menus here. And if you expand it, you can create a new API call. So I have an API name, this is Google Sheets. And then I have an API call, Google Sheets Read which is my API call to read the data. And what I do, I copy this URL and then I go back here and I paste it and then I pasted it here and this is pasted. When I, after I do that, you wanna click on initialize call. I have it set to reinitialize call. And so I can do it with you. And when I do that, it's gonna do a sample request. And it's doing it in order to understand that the data we're gonna be getting back so that you can make sense of this data when you're building your app. And so we have three fields. We have a credit rating, we have an APR, which is the percentage, and we have the row ID as well, which is an automatic field. And so this is absolutely fine. We're gonna click on save. And now this application can perfectly understand the kind of data we are working. Now we can actually go in and start to build the app. And so the app is actually very, very simple. There's a couple of things you need to understand. All of these are text fields. The interesting, the magic is actually happening in these pull downs. This is actually a pull down, which you can get here, a drop down, which you can get here. And what you wanna do is you wanna set the placeholder to the sheet first item. And so you click the sheet, you click here, and what you're gonna do is you're gonna, so if I, if I do this, I'm gonna, I'm gonna clear this expression. For the placeholder, you wanna click, you wanna click on insert dynamic data, and you wanna click get data from an external API. You're gonna pick the API that you just configured in the plugins. You're gonna click close, and you're gonna pick sheet one. And we need a placeholder, so what we need is the first element to display. You can also have the last element. I pick the first item. And then we have the first item, credit rating. Okay, credit rating, and that is it. Now it's gonna display the first item. Later on, when you so if you reload this app from the beginning, if I re reload this app and I refresh the page, it needs to load something right away. So then we can play with these numbers, we can pick another number, if we will. But initially, it needs to load something so that it makes sense. And that is why I'm showing the first item. For the choices store, the type of choices is text. The choices store is the same thing 
we click on this and we do dynamic field and we load our external data source, which if you configure it the way I explained, you're only gonna have one external data source, which is gonna be your Google Sheets, Google Sheets read, which is in this plugins here, which is this one right here. And so you're not gonna, you're, it's not gonna be very confusing because you're gonna only have one option. Once you do that, you're gonna pick sheet one and you're gonna pick credit, credit rating because the response looks like this. And you're simply gonna be picking sheet one. There's only gonna be sheet one because we only have one sheet. And you're gonna pick credit rating because that is what we are, the kind of data we're trying to pull. So if we go back here, this is credit rating. And then for option caption, it's gonna be the current option, which is what we're kind of working on. Now, this is a very interesting uh, thing here. This is actually an input that I've set up and I made it read only. This input is disabled. And the reason I did that is because I wanna use the value that's being filled in here later on when we are calculating the monthly payment. It makes it a lot easier to use the values in this field in other fields because if you set it as a regular text field, you won't be able to pull in the data as easily as if, if you make it uh, an input field, but you make it read only, which works quite well. And so the magic here is we are also doing, we're gonna do dynamic field here. We're gonna pull up external data and then we're gonna filter it. So if I have filter it, I'm gonna filter it because I only wanna get the data. So if I go to the spreadsheet, we are getting this, this column here, but I only wanna get the, uh, the cell that matches with that first drop down choice that we made. So if we go back to this app here, remember we are picking this. I don't wanna get a random field here. I wanna get the field that's in the same row as this credit rating, okay? And that's why we have to set it up correctly. And so if you go back here, I have my credit rating. This is called a constraint. I added a new constraint and I put credit rating equals to input credit ratings value, which is the credit rating that we input it here. And once you do that, it's gonna work really well. And then you're, we are getting the APR because we want the APR at the end of the day. We just want, the, we're just setting a constraint. Then we want the APR, which is the percentage, annual percentage rate, that's what APR stands for. And then we are formatting it. We are formatting it correctly, okay? And then we're setting the content format to percentage which is what they are. And then in our spreadsheet, we are listing them as the we are listing them as the decimal value. We're not listing them as as a literal percentage. So right here, this is point 0.1. This is actually 10% because when we're going to be displaying it, we're going to multiply it by 100, which is what percentage is. And here we are entering the literal value because 0 0.08 is actually 8%. And then we are when we are pulling this data, we are gonna be displaying it perfectly. Okay, and so here we have the home price. This is a field that you can enter. For the down payment, we have a down payment placeholder. It's asking you to enter your down payment. We're not setting anything. We have a content format of currency. And for the loan amount, this is very important because none of these are you know, of interest to the bank. What bank is interested in is the actual loan amount, right? And that is the number that we're gonna be using it when we are gonna be calculating the actual payout, okay? And so this number, we have the initial content is set to the home prices value, which is this value here, minus the down payments value, okay? And so whatever is in the down payment, we're gonna do here. If we don't enter anything in the down payment, then the loan amount becomes the home price value, which becomes 400,000, okay? Now, the most important thing is we are actually gonna be calculating the monthly payment, and we do that using their built-in function, and this is called calculate PMT here, and we are using loan payment, okay? And so if you do that, if you enter, if you click on here, you're gonna have options to calculate and different formulas. You can pick a formula and this is built in. And so it needs three arguments, this formula. It needs the rate, it needs the period, and it needs the PV, which stands for present value, okay? And so the rate is we're taking the rate here, input APR value, and this is why I set this as an input, as a read-only input instead of a text field. 
because I can pull it up very easily. For text fields, it's not as easy to pull in the actual value. You have to do some other, other processing in order to do that. But when you do it a read-only text field, text input field, it makes it a lot easier. And so for the rate, we take the percentage and we divide it by 12 because it's an annual rate and we want it in the monthly terms. Everything here is done in monthly terms. The period, we are doing a 30-year loan. 30 times 12 equals 360 months. Okay, remember, we are doing in monthly terms here. And for present value, which is the loan amount, okay, today, the loan amount, there is something called the present value and the future value. Future value is how much that money is going to be worth at the end of the term, and present value is how much that money is worth right now. And so we're using the present value. And what we're doing is we're taking the home prices value and we're subtracting the down payment and we're multiplying by negative one, okay? Because if you do not multiply by negative one, you're going to get a negative value, which is absolutely fine because PMT returns a negative value. Here is uh, here is an example of PMT. It returns a negative value. So if you don't, if you do not multiply by negative one, you're gonna get the negative value, which is gonna look kind of strange. I just want to show the positive value because this is a monthly payment, but it's negative because this is the money that we are paying. This is the money that we're giving away. So I just multiply it by negative one, and the end result is we have a very very cool calculator. Okay, so I can pick. Let's say I have really poor credit. And let's say I want to make a $200,000 down payment. That means I need only $200,000. I'm making a 50% down payment. And my monthly payment are going to be something like this. Now, and this is obviously not the full amount because there are other things that come into play. But for the purpose of this tutorial, we're using an official function to calculate it. And so right now we have a decent calculator right away. It's pretty much, it's very functional. It works we can go into the spreadsheet and we can delete rows, we can add rows as we see fit. And all you have to do is when, when you refresh this app, you're gonna see new data entered. And so potentially you can get this data from another source. So if somebody has a, a credit rating or a FICO score of you know less than 400, then this data is gonna fluctuate depending on the current market conditions. And so you can, you can pull this data from another source or you can pull this data right here in Google Sheets from another source. And that's going to be very, very convenient for you to do that. So it's very convenient to pull this data from external sources instead of hard coding this data inside of Bubble. And so in my opinion, it's a lot better method. And this makes it, it makes it super easy to do inside Bubble without having any workflows because I have no workflows at all. This is all done automatically, okay? And so this is all for today's videos. I just wanted to show you a quick way to build a calculator that you can potentially go out and later make it even better, fix the design, add some more functionality, have some nice sliders. You know, you can have some nice graphics. That is something I'm, I'm probably going to be making uh, enhancements in one of the future videos, okay? And so if you enjoy this video, if you learn something new, smash a like on this video, leave a comment below. Let me know if what kind of video you want to see next. Let me know if you have any questions or comments. And definitely subscribe to this channel if you haven't already on this channel. We are going to be making videos having to do with no code. So you can actually go out and build apps without writing a line of code. And a lot of tools that we're using in these tutorials have a very generous free monthly plans. You don't have to pay anything in order to get started and start building interesting and amazing apps. All right, so this is all from me. I really hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching it, and I will see you in the next video.